As a documentary or street photographer, you have to travel light. And it's great to have an ability to edit those thousands of cat's photographs that you took during your trip on the go. For many of us, the iPad is the only solution to do so. The weight of the latest MacBook Air is 1.24 kilograms or 2.7 pounds. And the iPad, which I carry around all the time, is only about 682 grams or 1.5 pounds. But the weight is not the only reason why I usually use my iPad for editing. So today let me share a couple of reasons why I use an iPad for most of my creative work and we're also going to compare two of my favorite editing apps. Portability is one of the greatest advantages of an iPad and we all know it. You can take it out to your favorite cafe and enjoy the view while drinking coffee and working at the same time. Watching people wandering around and minding their own business. I like spending time like this. And here are two accessories that I always carry in my bag. An SSD drive where I store all of my photographs. I use this little handy shockproof SanDisk 1TB SSD drive. And the second is a card reader because I just find transferring photos directly from the card to an iPad easier and faster than via in-camera Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Now the software, meaning photo editing apps. There are plenty of them in the App Store and I guess it's going to be more of them because of the amount of power that Apple puts in their newer iPads. You know, M-series CPUs works amazingly fast and I never had any issues with it. And by the way, it would be great if you let me know what's your favorite editing app in the comment section. Yeah, so now let's take a look at the apps that I'm using for editing on the go when I'm outside. I'm really happy that Capture One came up with a new version of their app, which is now I can use to edit my photographs because... Sorry Capture One, but before it was just unbearable. Alright, now let's take a look at the interface of Capture One. So on the left, all images, latest import, all captures, trash, now the import submenu import you can import from your uh, camera roll which is here photos and from files app now the next submenu is cameras I'll tell you about this in a bit but for now let's skip it and go here to albums well basically you just you know type the name of your al album and you create your album where you can store your photographs and to add it into your album it's basically you just drag it and put it like this in your album well, let's open this photograph and take a look at the menus that we have so here we can sort the photographs by color and also rating the next one is styles and presets so here basically when you save your preset or style yeah later you can apply it to your photograph from this menu okay so let me quickly show you what do we got here IQ styles legacy and spring that's it and here some presets for exposure color editor black and white sharpening and film grain all right so in the next menu it's basically a crop tool and you know I, I like this I like this tool that Capture One has this dialed style tool on the right here. Finally, the main editing menu and here the first Fujifilm, it says Fujifilm simulations. And yeah, in Capture One you can apply any of those film simulations that you like to your photograph. But it only works with raw photographs. So don't try to apply it to your JPEG because you simply won't have this sub-menu here. All the tools, yeah, all the standard tools that we know and we use on the desktop version of this app. The white balance tool, the exposure, okay, clarity, dehaze, color editor and vignetting. Sharpening, noise reduction, film grain and more. And this is basically all that you got in this app. And quite frankly, I would say it's not enough. And although it's really simple to use those wheels on the right to adjust and edit your photograph, I still find that the capability of this app is not as good as 
for example, Lightrooms. And before we switch to the Lightroom, I wanted to mention one more thing, which is completely different from the Lightroom. Now, what you can do with your Fuji camera. In my case, I go to Settings, Connection Settings, and then PC Connection, USB, Shooting Fixed. Okay, now I'm gonna connect my camera to an iPad. Here you go. And here, on the left, you're going to see Fujifilm X-Pro3. And let's shoot. Just take a couple of pictures. Okay, here you go. So when you shoot, you also have this uh, little button here on the right. You can click on it and the camera is gonna take a photograph. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what's happening behind me. That way you can take photographs and they're gonna be stored in the app. One thing for you to keep in mind when you're using this mode is that you actually only can shoot in JPEG here. You cannot shoot in RAW because it's just not gonna save it to your iPad. So RAW file for X-Pro3 is not supported. I'm pretty sure that for some, uh, maybe for some Sony cameras, they have uh, RAW support. But yeah, not for Fujifilm X-Pro3. Let's go and switch to the Lightroom. One thing to mention that these apps are not free and you have to pay for them. And surprisingly, the Capture One was even more expensive than the Lightroom. Just a bit, but... You know... <laughs> So basically, almost the same. All photos, Lightroom camera photos. This thing here is just using your camera. Don't try to connect your camera to an iPad because it's not gonna work. This is only using an iPad camera. Okay, recently added, recent edits and deleted. And again, we have the album, albums here. Same way I'm gonna create black and white. Ah, I already had black and white, okay. So, or, orc, whatever. <laughs> black and white orc. Uh, nope. So you cannot do it like this here. You cannot just drag your photograph in the album. Yeah, you need to add photos from, from your old photo collection or import new ones. So if I'm going here and I'm going to add it to my black and white album. See how many steps it takes me to add the photograph into this album here in the Lightroom. But on the other hand, it has a lot of editing tools which are missing in Capture One app. So here, if you go to Profiles and you click Browse, you're gonna open this menu, Camera Matching, and then again you have all of your Fujifilm simulations in app, so you can apply it to your photograph. Okay, I choose Acres and I'll go back here and now what I miss in Capture One app is uh, Curve Tool. Actually with the Curve Tool I usually use the Apple Pencil. So it's much easier to control the curve with your Pencil Tool, whether with your finger. I don't know, I just I just find it easier for me to control it with the, with the Pencil. So the big difference masking and you know the Lightroom masking is such a great tool let me show you so we're gonna do we're going to select the subject here and look like in three seconds it's created a ma mask around this around the subjects to two workers yeah here in the picture and now we can simply edit uh, these masks we can add or Decrease contrast, tweak the exposure, tweak the highlights, whatever you want, right? Shadows. So you can make the subjects pop in your picture. So actually, only because of this menu, I prefer Lightroom to Capture One. Because look at the amount of tools that you have here and you're missing in Capture One. 
So how guys from Capture One, you listen to users and you add masking tools and some other cool features that are missing right now. They added tethering and this is also great, but I, you know, to be honest, I almost never use the tethering on my shots because I do street photography, right? So you don't walk around with your iPad and the camera connected to it and take pictures, right? So it's mostly for studios yeah, and for photographers who work in studios. This is a great tool for them, but definitely not for street photography. So to summarize my approach on editing with an iPad, I usually take my iPad when I'm on the go, when I'm taking pictures. I also always have my SSD drive and the card reader because without them I just it's much slower process to export the photographs from your camera to the iPad with Wi-Fi. It's just slower. And regarding the software, I just showed you the Lightroom and Capture One for iPad. I don't know because I use I basically all the time use the Capture One on my PC on my desktop, uh, but I, <laughs> but you know it's not that good for an iPad right now. So maybe with the future updates, they they're gonna make it better. I'm sure. For now, I'll stick with the Lightroom for iPad. the The functionality is much better, and the tools they they just work smoother on the in the Lightroom. So in this video we were talking about editing a lot, but if you guys are interested in achieving a great look without editing, check out this video.